as we mentioned, growing tensions tonight between the former CIA director, the former FBI director, all over that unverified and salacious steel dossier. Our legal eagles are here to discuss tonight. Former deputy assistant attorneys general Harry Lippman and John Yu. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, I want to play a little bit of what Rich Limbaugh had to say today about now we have three investigations that we know of that are going into the origins of what happened. Might have been a little tongue in cheek. We'll let you decide. The next thing to keep a sharp eye out for, folks, and that is people fleeing the country. If you see James Comey in Argentina, or if you see James Clapper somewhere where they can't be extradited, then you will know that we are getting close. When these people start leaving, I'm half joking. It hasn't started yet, but man, are they nervous. All right, John, at this point, he says, hey, half joking, but who do you think should be most nervous at this point? Well, I think both of them should be nervous, both the FBI director, the CIA director, and the national intelligence director. And the reason why is because of the appointment by Attorney General Barr of Mr. Durham, the U.S. attorney in Connecticut, to take a look at all this. The reason why is if Mr. Barr, who is no, you know, who is no, like, sort of anti-deep state guy, he's a guy who started out in the CIA, if Attorney General Barr appointed a U.S. attorney, that probably means he thinks there's some grounds for a criminal investigation. There's already an investigation within the Justice Department going on by the Inspector General, which would you would use if you wanted to reform things in the department, change the way you did the FISA warrants. But to bring in an outside U.S. attorney to conduct a kind of criminal investigation, that should have a lot of people worried. All right. So, Harry, we understand there are three different investigations going on. The latest one, this U.S. attorney, John Durham, that we found out about, we're told it's been weeks that he's been on this job, maybe even longer. We have some hints. Uh, in the meantime, the, you have Brennan and Comey uh, through other intermediaries. What we're hearing is they're pointing the finger. It was him. No, I didn't want to include it. I didn't want to rely on it. He wanted to rely on it. Uh, Jim Jordan, obviously one of the conservative GOP folks over on the Hill and the House side, says this. Both stories can't be true. Comey told FBI in late 2016 that Brennan insisted on including the dossier in the intelligence community assessment. But CIA claims Comey made the recommendation and Brennan and Clapper objected. Harry, how do they untangle this? The first thing to understand, Shannon, these are two extremely different things. What Durham is looking into, what Barr wants to know about, is the origins of the probe, how the Steele dossier might have been used in the FISA application. And by the way, to John's point, Durham has, has several times in the past looked at sticky situations for um, Holder, for Reno, for Mukasey, and it wasn't criminal. And there is already a U.S. attorney looking at the situation. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's criminal. But the big thing to understand is what they're talking about now, the finger pointing, is using the, is whether this information should have been given to Trump. Comey did apparently, that's the dispute, decide that Trump should be briefed on it. Seems like that was probably a prudent thing to do, given the nature of the allegations. But it's 180 degrees different from the ongoing previous dispute about mm -hmm. how it was used in the FISA warrant. OK, so as we're trying to, to break this apart, and of course, these investigators yeah. will have scores of people helping them and trying to do that and getting answers for the rest of us. Um, the former House uh, Oversight Committee chairman, uh, Trey Gowdy, has been talking about this and, and says, listen, you need to look back to this email uh, bunch that's not public, but it's an email chain from back in December 2016 that may point us to the clues of whether Comey or um, Brennan was more relying on it or thinking it should be part of this intelligence assessment. Uh, John, do you think we, the public, the American people, ever get a look at those emails? Uh, probably not. They're probably protected by classifications, uh, probably top secret or higher. But, you know, maybe I, I've always thought, and I think you've had other people on the show also argue that President Trump should just declassify as much as possible behind all of this, behind the FISA applications, behind the continuing, this is the thing that's disturbing to me, is the continuing reliance on the Steele dossier, not just for the FISA warrant application on Trump campaign people, but you're talking about November, December of 2016 now. That's, uh, I think that's something we, you know, that Trump could allow the American people to see. Right. Otherwise, he'll just stay classified and we'll never see it. Let me bring Harry in for a quick final word. Do you think he declassifies everything as he said he might, the president? Probably not. But if he declassifies this, then we'll know, was it Comey or Clapper who said, let's show this to Trump? 
but it's that's or again Brennan. completely different from what uh, or, or Brennan, right? That, but it's mm -hmm. completely different from what the U.S. Mm -hmm. Attorney in Connecticut is now looking at. Okay, many more discussions to come on this front, gentlemen. Uh, Harry and John, thank you both. Good thank to see you. you. Thank Thanks, you, Shannon. John.